But everyone's worked out that's the quickest way to do a pit stop. Get the fuel in first, and then after that, do some work on it. But the car was jacked up. There's a few mechanics wandering around it, um, working on it, doing little bits and pieces, but I'm just not sure what. Aha! Uh -huh. Three wheels on our wagon. I was uh, watching in the historic race. One of the cars had a, a belt or uh, some, some something flapping around underneath the car, and in fact, was it was the uh, belt for holding on the external spare wheel that had come loose. And I wondered whether the external spare wheel was actually attached to the car when the race started. I thought that would be something: lose a wheel from your car and still have four left. Well, Jan Magnussen has lost one from the 12 panels, and he's only got three left coming into the pits. Jan was down in 15th place. He's been followed in by Werner Luckberger in the 20 Ascari. First time we've seen those and it's certainly another car that we were expecting to see a lot of and did in the first couple of laps was the number four golf audi stefan johansson's car 35th position at the moment it's only done 15 laps the leaders are currently on lap 19 so the golf car with its uh, early dramas was looking fast but uh, ran out of road in that uh, rainstorm he's dropped down the order the 34 car having a well, conscientious wheel change. This isn't perhaps the quickest thing I've ever seen. Jan Magnussen taking the chance to uh, hand over his car. So he is handing over to... Uh, who would that be? That would be Frank Lagorce, of course, with the uh, French sponsorship on the back of his car. David Brabham will take the third stint at the car, presumably uh, rather assuming that it makes it to that stage. Now, Magnussen losing a wheel. David... Uh, Probably slightly better to lose the whole wheel than just to have a burst tyre wrapping itself around all the suspension members. Uh, in some ways, yes. In other ways, not quite so good. Because the cars are so stiff nowadays, you can actually uh, come back on three wheels and it doesn't sort of drop down too far. But it does drop down, it does rub on things, does do some damage. Obviously, this has done some damage. We've seen the mechanic, when he put the wheel on, grab it to uh, make sure it was tight. And I could actually see the wheel moving. So uh, it's not tight in there. There's obviously something happened. There's something slack in there that's caused the wheel to come off to start with. Well, the Ascari on its way back out with... Who at the wheel? <laughs> I'm going to say Thierry Bootson because that's the colour of his helmet. So uh, does that make it Werner Luckberger, the Belgian? Luke, I, Luke I think it very probably fact, is. It's not Thierry Bootson's helmet. It's actually a copy of Stefan Beloff, who was his great hero. Very similar there. Martin Brundle leads Le Mans for Bentley. There is the sister car, the number eight machine in fifth place, Andy Wallace. Both men, of course, former winners of this race. 88 for Andy Wallace, 1990 for Martin Brundle, and uh, the common uh, thread there between those two drivers and uh, our expert analysts here, David Leslie, of course, Tom Walkinshaw's Jaguar operation. And uh, I bet Tom is watching this somewhere from uh, his armchair, if Northampton rugby team aren't playing, and thinking, actually, they're looking quite good, despite the fact they're not in silk cut colours. It's uh, Gloucester rugby team actually. He oh. was, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure he will be watching it. He'll certainly know what's going on. Um, doesn't matter whereabouts in the world he is. He's one of these people who keeps his uh, finger on the pulse wherever he is. And uh, he's certainly got a number of drivers that have driven for him in the past to driving various cars here. And uh, he'll keep an eye out for them because uh, sometime in the future his massive uh, concern at Tom Walkinshaw Racing, I'm sure we'll be looking at uh, Le Mans and we'll be hoping to come back. Uh, there have been uh,